Well, let's see you got a uh, Tapa Chico over there. Yes, yes. They, Are uh, they back as a sponsor? They're back as a sponsor. Um, this is our first repeat sponsor. No, that's... That may be, that may be accurate, yeah. All right, episode one and episode 20, whatever this Seven? one ends up being. Ish, yeah, whatever we need to release it. Yeah. All right, well, that's exciting. They're very exciting, yeah. They finally got back in stock after the... They sold pretty much everything. Yeah. Right after our... Yeah, they're finally back in stock, and that's why we got some yeah, eight yeah. months later or whatever. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, welcome back to Tapa Chico, and welcome to you to the Video Reformation Podcast. I'm Ben. I'm Justin. We're the co-founders of Storyboard Media and your guides to practicing effective video for business. We're like a guide on a journey to practicing effective video for business, because <laughs> like I don't have a, an analogy this week. <laughs> we are throwing it all together this morning to yes. make it happen. So, so for our audience, and maybe a little point of reference here, we're a little bit rushed today because um, this day of recording is the day that our stay-at-home effect, um, uh, or our stay-at-home order goes into effect. So we are rushing to get as much done here in the office as we can that needs to happen between now and April 30th. So... Um, we're recording 16 podcasts today. Yes, we're doing all the podcasts today, um, and we're even going to try a few with the guest, just to you know up the difficulty value a little bit. Yeah, um, well, I think it's a it's a time like the way it's all coming together. I mean, the topic of were you about to jump into? Go go today? ahead. I mean, the topic today is how video is going to play a role, a, a huge role in commerce moving forward. Yes. Um, you know, people are just starting to scratch the surface of how they use video. Forget coronavirus. And now that's out. Everyone's going home. Everyone's disconnected. And everyone, But everyone's being forced to use video to some extent. Right, right. That's why I've titled this episode Video in the Time of Corona. Mm-hmm. You know, like Love in the Time of Cholera. No. No? No. All right. Well, for those of you listeners who get that reference... DM me. Um, okay, we've also got a guest today. We have, uh, uh, I'm really excited about this. So am I. He's a good friend of ours, Ryan Carey. Yeah. Uh, Ryan actually has, has one of his offices just down the street here in Durham, another one in New York. Um, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit more about himself, but um, he runs Betteron. Betteron is a uh, company that helps, it, it basically coaches people to be better on camera. I get it. And so as we're everything is shifting towards a video world, Ryan's going to help us uh, apply some some new, new I don't know, I'm going to let him t- tell us what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, tell us you tell us a little background, you know, you kind of got your start in video at YouTube and since then have done a whole bunch of amazing things. Give us a little uh, little rundown of of Ryan Carey. Absolutely, very happy to. Um, well, it all began when I was born, and then the next, and I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, no, no, so, go on. <laughs> no, no, we have time. Um, yeah, so I've been in the video world, you could say, for around 15 years, and the only reason I say that is that that dawned on me the other day, and I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Like, I wonder what I've been doing that whole time. So I think about this often. <laughs> You know, long story kind of short, um, I was in the right place at the right time, um, and I jumped on to uh, the YouTube team uh, when they were just starting out in 2006. So I was living in San Francisco, and um, I got, uh, you know, I was working in digital, working for AOL, and all of a sudden this YouTube thing shows up, and I get a link in my email, and I'm like, oh, not only is this cool, this is probably the future. So I kind of found my way to a hiring manager and banged down his door and said, I'll sweep the floors if I have to, let me join your team, please. So I did, and I was on the, you know, I was was helping monetize YouTube before they knew how they were gonna monetize the site. Mm -hmm. Three months later, Google bought us and, you know, everything changed. Oh, it was pre-Google, okay. Okay. Yeah, so it was was pre-Google, so, and you know, at, at the time, I didn't know what an acquisition was. I was just kind of like, happy to be there. I I always had a thing with video and I think, you know, as my later career pans out, I was always a bit of a closet entertainer. And after six years at Google, sort of doing video strategy for businesses of all shapes and sizes, I kind of followed my 
I don't know, my heart, my passion, my calling. Really what it was is that I saw all these people out there in the world making cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought, this is where it's at. And the corporate life is cool in you know lots of safe, secure, and comfortable ways, but I just kind of thought, there's something more to be done out there. So I left YouTube and I started my own web series because I wanted to get my hands dirty and really understand what does it take to do all this stuff that people watch? Mm -hmm. um, you know, one interesting stat that I like to tell people is that when I started at YouTube, there was this nine to one ratio. Only one out of every 10 users on YouTube had ever uploaded a video. Mm -hmm. So hmm. you could call them creators if you wanted to, but yeah. oftentimes that was like one video per account that would never be touched again. But it just right. kind of showed that there was this imbalance between this population of people who, who wanted to create and wanted to put stuff out there yeah. while the rest of us just kind of sat back and watched. Yeah. Um, so um, I made a web series. It was awesome. I ran around San Francisco. I was crowdsourcing ideas. I was recording individual personalized episodes of me living my life to do nice things that people ask me to do. Like basically people would live vicariously through the videos I made for them. We took my name, Ryan Carey, and called it Rycariously. And if I if I recorded Very good. someone's thank you, thank you. It's one of my one of my more more crowning uh, personal branding achievements. You know, it became a philanthropic effort where mm -hmm. I was really just focused on one audience member and if I made them their own personal episode, they donated to a cause. So it was kind of like this personal. Oh, cool. Thing. Yeah. Um, and then in there came this new idea, which is kind of where we are now. Um, I wasn't making any money off of this um, creative endeavor, and uh, you know the bank account was running low. So I kind of thought I know enough about video to be dangerous in this market, and I had kind of you know because of YouTube gotten to take a little bit of a glance into the future and see where I thought things might be going. And what dawned on me was that, you know, the word authenticity now is pretty overused and it was getting mm -hmm. overused back then. But one thing that was true to me, when you look at, well, what kind of video works? Like not all video is gonna quote unquote work for mm -hmm. a business or a person. And, you know, kind of no surprise, but authentic, video and, auth and authenticity works. So mm -hmm. I was always trying to get businesses to leverage their authenticity. And you know, it's kind of like, well, what does that even mean? Well, to me, I would see all these companies brag about how great their people are. And I kind of thought to myself, well, if your people are so great and your culture is what really makes your business tick, why would you not take that core of authenticity and save yourself a lot of money and just put them in front of a camera and let them tell your story and let them t touch the hearts of your audience. And kind of inside of that, I realized that no one was doing that because nobody wanted to be on camera. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I wanted to try and solve for. So I started putting people in front of the camera being like, I'm gonna start to train you to be better on video. Mm -hmm. And that was seven years ago and kind of to like wrap up this long-winded intro, um, to me, Better On began as on-camera communications training. Mm -hmm. that, was the original, that was the original idea, and it still is that. But what it has evolved into, because of what I've kind of learned through doing this, is that it's really accelerated self-awareness um, training for people. Because, you know, YouTube's tagline, I thought about this the, the other day, this is, a, this, is, this is a fresh one. YouTube's tagline is broadcast yourself. We've all probably seen it. I remember back in the day, it was like, oh yeah, this is, that makes so much sense, you know, broadcast yourself. But as I get a little bit nerdier and I go deeper on like, well, how do we get people themselves to want to broadcast themselves anywhere for any purpose? What I've realized is that before you can broadcast yourself, to the world or to your audience. You've got to broadcast yourself to yourself. So there's a lot of kind of personal ex exploration there mm -hmm. that the camera provides. So I've kind of gone from this, 
yeah, let's help people make authentic video for you know the external video market. And what it's become is just helping people see who they truly are. Yeah, it, it goes much deeper than just making, it, being better at making videos. It's, <clears throat> there's a whole explore, like a self exploration going on. Um, I've seen, like you, you post videos on LinkedIn and stuff of people's first take and then after a one hour session, their, their final take of the day. Um, and it's amazing the transformation, the, the confidence they bring, um, the, the way that they compose themselves on screen. Um, it's, it's quite amazing. You guys do really good work. Thank you. You know, um, I don't want to simplify it too much because there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle. But, you know, from, from the client side, it always takes courage. Um, because standing in front of a camera and lights and an intimidating set and someone you don't know too well can be very um, mm -hmm. vulnerable. But mm -hmm. people who, who step into that, I really um, admire them. And then from there, the, like, the philosophy is just kind of like exposure therapy. Like nine out of 10 people, if you were to just stand in front of a camera and lights and just expose yourself to that vulnerability, after about 30 minutes, you're gonna calm down and you're gonna be willing to try different things. So mm -hmm. that's what I kind of, that's one way that I just sort of try to start with people. We had a, a, a prior project manager who, um, you know, two weeks in, we finally had her do her bio video oh, uh, God. For, for, our, <laughs> for our website. And she was so genuinely uncomfortable and uh, I mean, uncomfortable doesn't even begin to touch it. She like panicked. Physically reacting. Once we put her shaking. on the mark, she started like sweating and like she couldn't stop laughing. And then she was laughing so hard she started tearing up, but she might have just actually been crying. Like, I mean, she was trying to have fun with it. Yeah. But then like one, we just made that her bio that, video. That was an authentic representation of and her. It, it was hugely <laughs> authentic. It gave you a sense, but then of course, and I don't know that it was, I don't recall that it was directly related to this, but we made part of her job as our project manager be to send one-to-one -one videos to all of our clients every week to give them weekly updates. So instead of just Good sending out like, like an email, for we forced, and I mean, you can watch her yes. even without any like, direct training we gave her some pointers yeah. early on but once she started to own it one of the most interesting parts was she was she was working remotely and once she got her home office accent wall painted mm -hmm. like her demeanor on camera changed so much she loved it like and I, I, she she hired like a um you know a really talented friend to like do this yeah. very artistic kind of thing on a wall and so that was what was behind her when she shot these videos and you can just you could help we could go back and watch them now because we've still got I just them all. deleted her account yesterday just deleted her account <laughs> yesterday okay well we could have um never delete anything without an archive right um and Noted. and you can see her get better over the course and and it's it's some of it is exposure some of it is self-discovery some of it is as silly as like having a nice background but yeah uh, but she became like she was just able to exude herself through that and and now that i hear you talk about it i i, I i'm just reminded of her journey through that it wasn't deliberate it's just kind of how she settled well, into it we've all been on the journey too we've just um pretended like it was normal because right. we're a video company yeah. yeah so we had to pretend like this is just part of our job yeah. But we've Ben and I have had various uh, series that we've you know shows or whatever that we've, we've put up online. I remember the first time you were taking shots to just try and calm yourself or, or slamming caffeine. You couldn't figure it out. Now you're yeah. just cool as a cucumber. Well, you know me. Yeah, it's all the uh, it's all the prescribed medications. I'm taking. Oh. <laughs> That's so. Still so you guys now. actually you guys bring up something that I think is super relevant here is that. You're a video company, I'm a video company. There, you know, and as we go into the future, there are so many different kinds of video companies. Mm -hmm. And you know, YouTube is a video company. And mm -hmm. the same thing applied there is that one would assume that, oh, these guys quote unquote work in video, so mm -hmm. they must know how to do this. They must know how to be effective or be authentic or be themselves when the camera starts rolling. And the answer is, you know, the answer is no. <laughs> the mm -hmm. answer is that, you know, like th that's a separate 
muscle and skill yeah. that yeah. really isn't being taught yet. And I, I would tell anybody listening who's like, oh man, yeah, I should, you know, my, my company should look into this. My team should do this. I would tell them, don't, don't hire better on, do what you just said that you guys did to your former employee. Like mm-hmm. you, like that's, you can do it, you, you can do a DIY. It's just like you have to build in the time and the commitment and sort of like muscle your way through that inevitable awkwardness. And, you know, I would hope that, like you're saying, when she was done, like when she left, mm-hmm. she was a little bit more confident overall, mm-hmm. not just yeah, on yeah. camera, but just like in her life. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yeah, I, th- there could there could be a really interesting case study in mm-hmm. that. And with the e- ubiquity of cameras and um, this all, you know, I guess just cameras. Yeah, everyone, a lot of people know how to use cameras pretty well, but being on a different side of the camera, it's a whole different game. And you, like you said, you either muscle your way through it, or you you get like a little bit of a. Uh, I don't want to call it a cheat or whatever, but you work with people like you at better on who can get you there faster. Um, and for some people, for some people, they don't have the luxury of muscling their way through it and looking ridiculous sometimes because they're a COO, right? Right. And they've right. got to present themselves, whether it's just on stage, whether it's on camera, whether it's just in a boardroom to their, their board of directors, they've got to do it well um chances are if you got that you know position you probably had some of that that uh those huevos but um (laughs) right i've heard huevos it's a it's a good term that you can use either sex because it technically means eggs but they also right yeah so they also what now they also uh (laughs) yeah that's how you carry (laughs) eggs okay all right um, but so I, I imagine anyone who, who who's listening or watching this who is one of those more timid types, mm-hmm. you know, they, their first argument may be, well, why do I even need to be on video anyway? Why do I need to show myself? Mm-hmm. But there's this element of like a, a, you know, a personal conversation, right? Like a one-on-one. Uh-huh. There, there's so many opportunities. And, and Ryan, with a lot of the the things that I see you post, it, it's about one person engaging with a camera, right? Mm-hmm. But whether we're talking yeah. about like, you know, a Go video um, or Loom or whatever, where it's kind of that like you record something, you're looking into the camera and you're sending it to like one person, that yeah, one to one, but a one way, but, but it's a one way, yeah. one to one. Um, or whether you're on like you know a live Zoom conference with a mm-hmm. whole bunch of people you're still kind of treating that lens as like the proxy for the eyeballs in the room yeah but what yeah. is it about video that gives us that additional level of that like that intimate personal face-to-face communication reaction because i think there's something in there that is so valuable mm-hmm. i don't have an answer for it i'm not mm-hmm. this isn't one of those where i'm kind of setting it up to you know <clears throat> for you to say something and then you ask me and then I yeah. have my planned answer. But like there's, there's something ele- that, that's elevated with video communication that's as close as you can get to being in person. You're right. And so I'm uh, going back to my original point, I feel like, you know, somebody said, well, why do I even need to do that? Can, let's explore a little bit that added benefit, that added level of intimacy, connection, authenticity. authenticity. Yeah. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Justin? No, um, maybe we'll discover it on our on our journey here through the the podcast. Ryan, I imagine you have some thoughts about that. I do have a couple ideas. Just having tried to really study this over the years, and especially mm-hmm. now with this moment we're in, and the timeliness of our conversation, and the fact that everybody all of a sudden is on video. Which I also want to point out. On video and on camera, to me, are two completely different planets. And there needs sure, to be same. work done on both planets. And we can come back to that. And I guess we probably should come back to that. But yeah. to talk about kind of like, you know, why and what, you know, why should I even, why do I need to be on video? You know, I don't think it is about that. My sort of philosophy is that um, 
Two other totally separate planets that we're, that we're learning now is two-way video and one-way video. And that would, you know, if you've worked in the video space, that makes more sense. But if you're kind of new to it and yeah. just like trying sure, to, break, you know, pl play with it, it's like, well, I don't, I don't know, like a camera's a camera. Mm -hmm. So my, my thought is that, you know, two-way video is a Zoom call, it's Google Hangout. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. one-way is like you guys are saying, you record yourself on Loom, you record yourself, you put it on YouTube. You know, it's two different muscles because when you're on a two-way call, there's someone there. Like you, like mm -hmm. us right now, this is this is a two-way call. Um, yeah. But I will point out that I'm actually recording myself with you guys not with me, so I'm exercising the muscle that I've learned over the years by talking one way and imagining you, mm -hmm. the, imagining you here. Sure. So anyway, what it comes down to and what I uh, really like to tap people on is to, like it all starts with, with one way. I think one way video leads to effectiveness in two way video and it's not the other way around. Like the core Say that muscle again. to Say build. Say it again. I think that, that the core muscle to be built lives on the one way video side and that will translate to a two way sure. yep. video. Yep. Versus, you know, if I sit on Zoom calls all day and I turn on the camera to make a YouTube video, I'm not gonna be any more effective probably. Whereas if I'm doing it one way, I'm getting practice, you know, imagining my audience, really Absolutely. trying to, because that's what it's all about. Like part of the muscle you're building here is yeah. that imagination. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so what I like to tell people oftentimes is like my process is, you get on camera, you practice one way, people fumble through it, they feel super awkward, they get really nervous, they watch themselves, they talk to me about it, they talk to one of our coaches about it. You know, it's pretty uh, vulnerable stuff. And then I break the hard news to them and I tell them, stop making it about you. Mm -hmm. this, is not a, this is not about you. This is about yeah. them. This is about your audience. And this is about giving. And it's about giving your gifts, giving your energy, giving who you are to the camera. And mm -hmm. when people can make that shift, that's when the door is open. And they're like, oh, no one's even watching. No one even cares. Like people's attention spans are so, so short. No one's watching me. Like I've got to bring my A game yeah. of being on camera to really grab someone. And with that comes this you know, like they begin to open a part of themselves that they never used before. And it's usually kind of beautiful because mm -hmm. that's when they, they kind of turn on and they're like, oh, this isn't as scary as I ever thought it would be. Um, this is awesome. So when people say, well, why do I need to do video? It's like, you don't have to do video, but you should invest the time to kind of do the personal development that I'm talking about. Um, mm -hmm. give it because we've been living in such a disconnected world for so long because of technology. You know, one of the things that I've been trying to focus on for this many years is like video is what we have at our disposal to bring people back in touch instead mm -hmm. of becoming so inside of themselves. So kind of one of my goals here is to bring people out again and record it <laughs> and show it to them. Yeah, I bet that's pretty pretty rewarding seeing you know in a one hour session with you seeing somebody change that much i mean they they they're when they walk out those doors i'm sure their shoulders are back their their chin is up you know they're just a, a slightly different person and getting to watch that transformation you know it's a different it's a different world than than ours where we go into a studio and we tell an actor that she sucks and I'm just joking we don't yeah that's quit. how you do it <clears throat> stop fucking up producer <laughs> director <laughs> um yeah no but get, but getting to actually getting to work with with a, a real f you know like a fresh uh green young or like inexperienced person um and seeing that 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 dramatic transformation so um I feel like I, I feel like so many of Ryan's points give me so much more ammo for, you know, one of my rants about not about staying away from, you know, using employee non actor uh -huh. people, okay. right? But what it gives me is a division in that thought between like confident 
and and prepared employees. Yeah. And you know, just oh, we can put like our marketing director on camera because she's or our PR she's director because she's used to talking or whatever. Yeah. And so, you know, to me it was just always this kind of binary decision. Like like, you know, I think we've discussed it in like places to to that people think they can save money. Oh, we don't have to pay an actor for a day. Yeah. We can just bring in one of our employees. And then it ends up taking twice as long to shoot. You don't get as good a performance, whatever. But now there's this third option of, you know, like better on certified employees, kind right. of like, like camera ready employees. Yeah. That's a totally different conversation. Uh, you know, I would have to and, have with a client between that and an actor, and, depending on what the, the situation was. And knowing that you have someone who is prepared to, yes. to be on camera can can dramatically shift the the way that an agency like us would work with that with that company. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We may not do scripted stuff as much or especially not hire actors, we can get a lot more out of the resources that are already there should that person be better on certified. Yeah. And an actor is someone that you hire once for the one or two shoot days. If you've invested in training some of your key employees, you've got them there every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm I I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to like you know sell your service for you here. I, I, I mean, I'm just no. talking like from our perspective. If we had a client who had a couple people who'd been through your training or a training like yours, yeah, I would I would approach the content we mm -hmm. could make with them at mm -hmm. scale, yes. which is something we've talked about recently. I, I would treat that very differently than you know if I thought I had to bring in an actor every time. Yeah. And guys, I would almost argue that by doing that, it would empower companies like you to create potentially like a whole new genre of video, a whole yeah. new like yes. mic micro genre. Um, because, you know, there is no script, there is no acting, it's kind of turning traditional production on its head. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a, an actor doesn't give a shit about the product. They don't give a shit about the culture like they're actors like they're, you know, like they're, that's oh, what they're getting the product, paid for. Yeah, yeah, yeah that you know, company like, might be selling. Like, yeah. like if you have someone who is, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think that yeah. It, it, trust me, <laughs> I've thought about this forever. <laughs> I could talk about this for years, but yes, it could totally change the game of what kind of content um, you could create and what kind of metrics you could reach people with. Um, and I what think do you, what do you mean that, by that? So, you know, in terms of what what metrics might shift, like I'm not saying we need to, you know, reinvent the view. However, I would like to, you know, that's a whole other conversation. What is the value <laughs> of what's the value of a of a view anyway? But, you know, I think that you might see a change in, you know, audience development and who feels more drawn to the video strategy that a company is rolling out with this kind of content. Um, because I think that the, all of the, like, to me, digital video has followed the model of video production. It's just been this easy inheritance of like, well, here's how it's been done and we're just gonna keep it going this way. And all the metrics and the formats and what we see now kind of follow that. But if you like drew a hard line and said, okay, we're gonna stop a bunch of this shit now and we're gonna turn we're gonna we're gonna open it up to, you know, like I'm saying, like, you know, I like to call it like, you know, like non-actor people facing camera content, like whatever, whatever we mm -hmm. can come away with that. You know, like we can do better. <laughs> yeah, right, yes, yes, you guys, yes. Next episode we can we we can roll that well, out. <laughs> we'll we'll polish we'll polish your name for that. Yeah. We we love coming up with names for things. I just think that if you give like if we take what I'm saying about developing a human, an employee, whoever, uh, to become better on video, which can mean a lot of different things, and and part of that is like a more confident human, if you give them the power and the permission to reach out through a camera and connect to whoever that intended audience might be, the way that they do it would be so unique and so natural and so unscripted and so like, you know, untraditional like call to action. You know, I think that they could really develop a new level of connection through video that we haven't seen yet within, within the like business realm. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which which employees? Uh, think about them. Maybe uh, how? Well, I guess however you want to. But I'm thinking about them from a department, right? There's yep. marketing. There's HR. There's uh, customer success, sales, account management, all that stuff. Who has the most to gain from from being better on camera? Hmm. Who? What I if it found, doesn't if it doesn't break what, down that way, that's fine. That's just kind of the way I, I like to think about it. But well, I, in my experience of doing this for a couple years, it breaks down in a way I didn't expect, which is why I'm so excited about the future. So <laughs> I would have expected, you know, sales to be mm-hmm. like, yeah, we're a bunch of extroverts, we're a bunch of people, people. We make more money by making connections. Give me that camera, you know, make me better on, like make this happen. Yeah. And as I've gone from less, um, you know, like this is all about output a video and it's more about personal development. I found that um, a lot of engineering clients tend to grow the fastest because they're the most unsuspecting. Um, and really what we become and what we've been focused on, focusing on for the past year is a lot of leadership development. And what that means is it doesn't matter what department you're in, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, that the kind of people who are willing to sort of show up and shed their armor and be who they are and practice doing that work in front of a camera are true leaders. And, you know, they don't, they may not have the title to match. They may just be this, you know, kind of person who's like, I want to connect and I see the value here. So over the past year, we've had a lot of leadership development programs be like, we need to build better on into what we consider our leaders to actually be because it builds Mm -hmm. this self-awareness, it builds this confidence. Now, at the same time, if I can someday, you know, spin off a couple different branches of Betteron, I'm gonna develop some sort of like talent agency of the future where we go into companies and we say, hey, I don't care who's the most senior, who's the most junior. I don't care what someone's title says. I want the people who have the it factor and who know they want to build that it factor. And we explain what this new it factor is, and we put them through the ringer. And they come out and they're like, all right, I'm ready. Let's in do this, this. In this new world that we're, that we're starting to just barely walk through the doors of. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be. Abandon all hope, ye that, who enter here. That's going to be, like with video being a, a primary means of communication, those act th- those uh, employees not act- those employees are going to excel that much faster because they're they're able to present themselves, bring their authenticity, be themselves, but show that leadership through the the one way that they have, which is video. And and that and, to me is yeah. go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to say, you know, like we're, what we're kind of circling here is this is this is a this is a very, this is a very marketable skill. If, you know, this is a very powerful soft skill. And I think that one of the reasons that it's, to me, a little bit slow to come to the market and be valued is that the value of a skill is determined by hiring managers, by senior leadership. And, mm-hmm. you know, senior leadership is still in that older realm who didn't grow up in this digital age. They're still kind of above that bar, you could say. and. I don't have 40 or 50 year old people banging down my door to get vulnerable on camera. Like they are, (laughs) they are, they are more than happy to stay in their comfort zone with what they've known. And And it's worked for them. And it's, (laughs) it's worked for them. So I think, you know, as we sort of inject this value and what we're talking about into the market, you're going to see people be like, Oh man, yeah, give me give me some talent that can do that because I know how to use it. And yeah. the current leadership doesn't know how to use it because they're not speaking video fluently um, 
enough. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's what I see about what's happening in our economy right now, right? I mean, in our workplaces, is all of a sudden everybody is forced to be on Zoom calls, mm-hmm. right? Everybody is is forced to stay at home and continue to do their job. For the sure. ones that are lucky enough to have jobs where they can work sure. from home, right? Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're having to figure out how to communicate with people that they're used to sitting across the cubicle from. Yeah. Oh, right? And, and to me, this reminds me, maybe to date myself a little bit, but this, this moment reminds me, um, for video, reminds me so much of gas prices in the early 2000s. Gas prices in the like my whole life, I remember gas station um, prices. Like all of the signage was like a painted on one and a decimal, and then they would swap out like you know eighty nine cents, sixty seven cents, mm-hmm. right? And then I, I think it was uh, probably Hurricane Katrina that that triggered it. But all of a sudden, you started seeing billboards at gas station signs like turning the ones into twos because all of a sudden gas was over two dollars a gallon. We haven't gone back. Like the market realized that it could bear, you know, two dollars plus a gallon, and we haven't gone back to one dollar a gallon. Right now. <laughs> sure. sure. Um, thanks for supporting my point. <laughs> but but there was, I, I mean, I, I think a lot of people thought, oh, okay, well, there was a natural disaster. This is temporary, and it just now for the last fifteen plus years. Gas has been in the two and three dollar range. Yeah. I I I feel very much the same way that in a lot of uh, aspects that the remote working is like people being forced to remote work is going to fundamentally change mm-hmm. how we work once we get out of this. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to see it, it's all of the people, Ryan, like you were talking about, the 40, 50 year old executives who haven't had to do this, who've maybe been putting off video programs, putting off remote working programs because they don't know how it works for them. Now they're finding out. And once everybody has to do it, like now we've all done it for the first time mm-hmm. and everybody's kind of figured out how this works. Why do we think it's going to go back to the way it was? <clears throat> For us, and we've discussed this, I think this is the end of like local only relation, like sales and customer relationships. I think customers, uh, companies are going to learn that whether somebody's sitting across their conference table from them or on their video chat in their conference room or their living room or whatever, it doesn't make any difference. You have to, you have to accept that that's the reality now, and and it's that's. People are going to just start to follow. Like, I think they're just going to start to do that. They're just do, that. Like now, the, the band aid has been forced off of them. Yeah, and they're used to doing it. And so, I think a lot of I, you know, I think about it from our perspective. We have always struggled with, you know, do we go after, you know, local companies, you know, companies around the country, whatever. And we have found that whether they're local or remote, we end up communicating with them at the same time mm-hmm. all the time anyway, mm-hmm. through a lot of video conferences and, and weekly you know, go video updates and things like that. So it really doesn't matter whether they're three blocks away mm-hmm. or in San Francisco. And mm-hmm. I think that's what everybody else is realizing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think, but I think that goes into salespeople too, right? And, and people who have to buy <clears> things <throat> from salespeople. You don't have to have somebody come into your store and shake your hand and give you a business card anymore mm-hmm. um, because we're not allowed to do that right now. And I just, my guess is we don't go back to the way things are. Now that the Band-Aid's off, we keep going more that direction. Sure. It's like when a river just starts to find a, a new path and yes. just diverts completely. Yep. Uh, the other side dries up. I have a question for both of you to sort of ponder. <clears throat> no, thanks. Do you guys... Um, I'm just joking. Go ahead. What do you guys think about the statement that we're moving into a place now that because people's hands have been forced into the video realm, like they have to dip their toe in now, is it gonna, is it gonna become this really competitive market of whoever can do video better will win? I mean, I suppose I can think about my answer first, but what wants to come out of my mouth is I feel like that's what we've been saying for the last 18 to 24 months. Yeah. 
Right. I mean, I, I, mean, I think I think Justin, you said it first. I think we were giving a presentation somewhere, and you just kind of like ad libbed, um, and then it became a talking point. But like, you know, two years from now, everybody's going to be using video. Do you want to be starting to use video then, or do you want to have two years of experience mm-hmm. when you get to that point? Mm-hmm. And and so now, so I for I a mean, lot of people now we're at that yeah, point. <laughs> and so I hear that question is, is you know from from Ryan from what you're saying that's kind of what I'm hearing except we just have this this you know hand forced yeah. moment. Um, so I I mean I totally think that. You know, it, it's going to get more competitive. The people who are the companies that that are going to find a way to to utilize video better. I mean, uh, I, I have thought this for a long time, and now I just think that it's on average maybe the timeline is the same because uh-huh. there's you know what's happening right now and the economic slowdown associated with it, and so it's going to take some time for businesses to ramp back up and get back to where they were. But it's the ones who spend this time getting better at it instead of avoiding it instead of avoiding it um Mm -hmm. and i but i but i I don't think that's too profound a thought i mean i think that just like the companies that that you know are still hiring right now uh because they can Mm -hmm. um you know those are the companies that are that are going to come out of all of this better off because they were able to invest at a time where everyone, where a lot of other people were just contracting, freezing, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, don't stand still, and maybe don't move <laughs> in the same direction, but at least move a direction. And yeah. this is certainly a direction that's in front of them. So, I, I mean, my gut is yes, it absolutely will come down to whoever can. It's going to be more competitive. It's it's you're just going to have to be better at and on video. Ryan, I know you can't give away all of your secrets uh, right now. We wouldn't obviously just don't have enough time either. But what are some things that our listeners can do as they're starting to embark on more video, whether it's, you know, one to many, one to one or one on one? You know, what can they do to be better on video? Start recording yourself and practice and watch yourself and don't be afraid to do that. And and push yourself to jump off the ledge because that doesn't mean recording yourself and watching it. It means doing the hard work, which is sharing it, which is a whole nother world. Hmm. You can practice Mm -hmm. and film and, you know, like be on Zoom by yourself and practice and talk or whatever you want to do. But by giving your video, your presence to an audience, even if it's one person, that's the muscle that people need to get used to. And it's a mm-hmm. big, broad one, you know? So I would just say, you know, like here's a plug, I love Loom more than mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. Use loom.com, They're, they, are, they, are, they are not paying me, I love it. And I think starting with one person to make videos for one person at a time, you know, there's no harm in that. Um, so get the understand what it feels like to record yourself and then be seen by someone and right. keep doing that and find There's, what your style is. That sharing is important because you're gonna hate yourself the first couple times you watch whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Even if you're pretty good at it, you're gonna hate di- different things about it. But most people don't give a shit. <laughs> they right. just want to. They want effective communication. Well, and and most people see that from you all the time anyway. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so they're used to how you talk, how you communicate, and whatever. You're just not so used to watching and listening to yourself communicate. But the, the, that sh- way. the sharing, people may not give direct feedback, but the way uh, the ways in which they respond is a form of feedback. Do you get a better response to a cold email because you sent a video and you were yourself and you were just having fun and, and it was a person to person kind of thing? Um, does your manager or, or does a client uh, treat you better because they're seeing those weekly updates with videos in them? Um, do they respond to you faster? You know, all that by sharing it, that is feedback that you have to consider. Yeah, I mean, when we started doing press play in VMU, uh, I heard from people I haven't heard from in years that I wouldn't expect would have ever seen any of it. Mm-hmm. But because 
you know, like Your I was sharing shared. them on my Facebook page <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Like, you know, I would go home for Christmas and my uncle who I haven't talked to since the previous Christmas would be like, I love your videos. I have no idea what you're talking about, but there's, a, and like, that is huge confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that gives you that sense of, uh, you know, and, and even if it's like a comment or a like, or, you know, or anything, or, or like that, for that first response we get from a new client when we send them mm -hmm. a weekly update. These are great. Almost all the time. I was like, oh my God, these are great. Thanks so yeah. much. Can't, you know, we're psyched to be working with you guys. Whatever, like, yeah. There's, there's, there's value in that for the next time you hit record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 just to point out, Ben, that's really, 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 really important. And I'm really glad you said that. Um, when people who are not used to doing this kind of walk into the unknown, like they don't know what they're looking for. They're just like, okay, I got to do video, whatever that means, mm -hmm. and they put themselves out there. People might be thinking like, oh man, I hope I get some views. I hope someone like this likes this. Maybe like like maybe someone will like leave a comment. I think we've been trained to want these social metrics, which mean jack shit anyway. What really matters, and this has happened to me, which is why, why I'm saying this, is that like I get insecure all the time when I make a video. I am not, I've just done it enough where I know it's worth it. And I I, I have the, you know, I get cold feet all the time. But there's this thing that happens where I won't hear back from anyone. I won't get a like or anything and I'm like, oh my God, I suck, I'm terrible. And I just, you know, like beat myself up. But then you get that one or two people in the real world mm -hmm. who walk by you or you see them and they're like, dude, your video was awesome. And yep. <laughs> that, real, that real world view, that real world comment, that is what keeps me going. And that mm -hmm. is, because that's what matters. Like you, this is, right. video is about getting it to be offline. Like we don't want to live inside of the internet forever. We want to, you know, have a real connection. So mm -hmm. I think what you're saying is its own metric that's not recorded in like a database or a dashboard. Like it's yeah. just real interaction. Interesting. I like that thought. We, I know we've got to wrap up here. Um, what's the, what? Well, you said just practice, practice, do it, record it, watch it, share it. What else, like, are there any like easy things you can do, like posture or tone or whatever to, to make better communication through video? Yeah, forget, I mean, forget I, about I was, lighting, cameras, all that kind of stuff. I'm talking like, what can performance. you performance wise? Um, I think um, one thing I like to say is that I call the camera the great speed bump. The camera slows everything down. So if you're trying to, you know, captivate someone or give them uh, your focus and get their attention, like you need to bring your energy up a lot. And I yeah. often say you've got you've got to mm -hmm. be at an 11 out of 10, which, you know, don't look at a camera and talk to it like you're having a cup of coffee with someone. Yeah. Talk to it like that person is 20 feet away and they're falling asleep and you've got 10 seconds. Like yeah practice upping your energy because that's what it needs to be on. Like, and you've got to learn what does it take to be on when the camera's on? Because those are the moments that matter because someone is going to watch your video in their own moment and what you do in your moment has got to translate. And if you, you know, if you half-ass it or if you come in just kind of average, great because you're putting it out there but you need to kind of build that muscle, pushing yourself to be an 11 out of 10. Especially as video communication is gonna start ramping up like crazy, you've got to have, you've got to stand out. You can't be like a grumpy Gus or anything. Right. You've got to, you've got to bring, you've got to be authentically yourself, but bringing that energy is gonna, is gonna mean that much more too. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's great practice for anybody. Um, well, I know you've got a lot of great content you share on LinkedIn. Um, what, what can people do to, to learn more about Better On? Uh, www.betteron.video. Yes, the website is what we do. Um, and you know, if you are a leader or a manager or a team and you wanna um, get your people better on camera for all the reasons we just talked about, reach out. Um, you know, we work all over the country, ideally all over the world. We're going to 
We're doing a lot more remote work right now um, because of sure. the situation yeah. we're in. So yeah, reach out. We'd love to talk to anybody who kind of gets um, what it is we're talking about here. Awesome. Well, that is Ryan Carey, a good friend of ours, just down the road. Also, you have office in New York as well, right? Yeah, we got a studio in New York and I have a studio here in Durham. Awesome. Well, uh, I look forward to seeing you once again. Um, hopefully, we'll get to hug and shake hands and maybe nuzzle a little bit when the time is right. Um, Bring it on. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> well, yeah, you I'm, just have to have Mayor Shul tell you when that's okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on. We didn't get to anything that we wrote down <laughs> on, our, on our outline, but I think this is really, really <laughs> valuable. Uh, so I appreciate you taking some time and, and sharing your thoughts. Anytime, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, cool. Thank we'll you so you much. All, All right, right, guys. Take it easy. Take care. All right. <clears throat> well, that was fun. Yeah, that was a great conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a better conversation than if we had stuck to our outline. Yeah. Even. Yeah. Um, About 10 minutes in, I'm like, this is going in different places. That is a great direction. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I think I think it's... I think so many people are looking for a sense of direction and a sense of maybe a new normalcy right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel like some of the panic is starting to subside, right? Like, people get that this is the new normal. Mm -hmm. Companies are continuing to operate. Mm -hmm. Workers are continuing to work from home. Again, those who are lucky enough to have jobs where they can work from home. Um, but I think still a lot of people just don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And and that's, I think, just from a mental standpoint, that's positive to think about. What? Right, just what's, what's it going to be like in two or three months? Because mm -hmm. it's probably going to be better in two or three months than worse yeah. in two or three months. And maybe it's four months. Maybe it's five months. But... Like, I think it's it's good for people's mental health to think about what is the light at the end of this Sure, tunnel. what's on the other side of this thing? And we can we can look at everything that's happening right now, and, and, I, and at least for me, and maybe this is just kind of a human nature thing, where we are now, I th you know, in terms of behaviors and, and how we're doing our jobs now, as opposed to a month ago, mm -hmm. is probably closer to how we'll be doing our jobs yeah. for the next 10 years than what we were doing a yeah. month ago. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, find the things that you like about this new reality. You know, dig in, take, lean into dig that. in, lean in. Yeah. Take this time to get better on camera, mm -hmm. right? Take this time to, you've got tons of opportunities right now with, you know, Google Hangouts and Zoom and all that kind of other stuff you're doing. Why not spend some time between those meetings Recording yourself and watching yourself. Sure. Because if you've got a meeting with 20 people in it that's virtual right now, well, the people who are actually spending a little bit of time, like, you know, curating their online, their video presence, mm -hmm. are probably going to stand out in those meetings too. Mm -hmm. So you may be better suited for that next promotion or, you know, whatever it is, because you're investing time in yourself to be better in those video conversations. I forget who said it i heard somebody else say it referencing them or whatever but um i think it was an economist all pro profit comes from risk that's dr seuss okay um you have yeah. to you have to step out on that ledge and once you do you'll see that there's it's really not that far of a drop and when you do step off that ledge you're gonna you're gonna probably rise above instead of fall hmm. wow that felt really good like yeah felt like a thing yeah I, I, like that's my new thing yeah Do um, dr seuss just make it <laughs> rhyme yeah yeah and then you can attribute it to dr seuss um so take that like like you said a lot of people are at at home kind of feeling trying to figure out a feeling the gaps between meetings or whatever take that risk now and, and build that skill and you will come out of this thing way better off and way more prepared for the future. Um, this isn't, like, this is just a different experience than what you may put on your Instagram stories or TikTok. Because that's... Oh, definitely. I mean, that's a whole... Di that, like, you're not really communicating. It's all mimetic, you know? A lot of those, those like, TikTok uh, challenges and themes and stuff. Mimetic, you say, huh? 
Like me, it's all memes. That's what I wanted to 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 go for. Mimetic. Study of information and culture based on an analogy. That's mimetics. Oh. <laughs> Of or pertaining to memes, pertaining yeah. to replication of concepts. Yeah. Memetic. Yeah. M-E-M-E-T-I-C. <laughs> Memetic. Um, this is about actually getting the person on the other end of this video to change. And this is a, like, if you can be a change agent, if you can get them going from, I don't care about you to, oh, that is an interesting problem that you guys solve. Mm -hmm. Like that, the ability to change somebody and be that change agent is going to set is going to give you new opportunities in life. Yeah, um, and this is a great time to practice that. Well, uh, thanks again to Ryan Carey. Mm -hmm. um, thanks again to Tapo Chico <clears throat> yeah. to be our first oh, returning I'm sorry. sponsor. I think they may uh, ask for yeah, a refund. There we go. That's the ground. That, that's a good one. No, we can just fix it in post. Okay. Yeah, it'll be there the whole time. Okay, good. Um, all right, and um, yeah. The usual. Yeah, thanks for thanks for thanks checking for, us out. Thanks for checking us out. You know, do the whole subscribe, rating, liking, mm, commenting, share and sharing, all that kind mom. of stuff that we I think are contractually obligated to ask people to do because it doesn't feel very authentic. I just signed everybody it. Everybody just read it. does it. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that's this episode of the Video Reformation Podcast. We will right. see you or speak to you next time. We did it. We did it. Hey. All right, everybody. Gas masks back on. Uh, should we do a promo? Um, I th yeah, we could. I felt like there was something that you were saying right after Ryan got off. That I was like, oh, that could be a good promo. So we can be good. Well, there's your promo. <laughs> Just use that the exact clip. <laughs> Say, there's something that Ben said earlier that was a really good <laughs> promo. Uh, uh, which part? Right after Ryan got off, I can't remember what it was. Uh, but it felt like a good summary, but also like referencing Ryan being there, which I think is a little bit of a teaser. Okay.